Okay. I'm going to work with uh, with a single stone at eight six oval. Uh, I will have to enlarge it after when I, I'm through doing the preliminary sketch. Basically, what I'm doing now is just to get an idea of where I want to head. My head right now and where I'm thinking, I have no idea what I'm making. All I know is I want to make a ring. That's what it's going to be. The center story of the ring is an 8-6 oval, and it could be almost any stone at all. Uh, I will not mention any specific stone at all because it could be anything. It's going to be in pencil, so you could interpret the color of the stone later on at, a, at another point when it goes into the rendering. So now we start. I start by taking measurement with the ruler. So I have a, me a metric ruler, and then I'm going to go an 8-6 on the ruler, and I'm going to measure the length, 8-6, the width, 6 by 6, the 8 long, 6 wide, and I'm going to divide this up, match up the dots on the paper with the tracing paper, fold the paper so that I can get an accurate stone. And it'll give, this will also give me all the reference points I need when I'm making the ring. Um, I then fold, I, ma I mark the paper with a pencil a little further out so I can line up the crease and bring it across, line up the two dots on a three by three, which makes six millimeter. That gives me the center of the stone. So now I've got the center of the stone on the paper. Now I will take and make sure I've got a good sharp point on my pencil. And use the little, the little mechanical that we talked about on the blog. And uh, then I will just make little short strokes. Uh, and of all the stones, the oval is unusual because when you say make an oval, if you say make a square, a square is a square. It's just the size, seven, eight millimeter, nine millimeter, ten. But a square is a square. A round is a round, and when you do uh, an oval, it, ovals have all kinds of shapes. Ovals are not just an oval. They can have uh, a squarish kind of oval, a more pointed, elongated oval. So ovals are the very unusual stone. That's the way they are. Now, of all the basics, the oval, the square, the round, and the pear, and the marquee. Generally, those are the five basic stones, and everything else is fancy after that. And maybe the emerald cut also might be another one, which is a, a, a rectangle with the corners cut, little cuts on the corners. So now we're going to stick to the oval. Now I've done one, one a quarter of it, rub it off. So now I've got the exact reflection on the other side. And uh, the one thing I want to do is with this ring is I don't want to make it too complicated. I want to make it so that it's to give you an idea of just the approach and how you lay the ring out. What is the first step, second step, third step as you go along. This particular oval is now complete. Now I have to decide. I can decide to go with prong settings or I can go with bezel setting. I can do a semi-bezel which is uh, it's like the oval and then it has two bars either on the side or two bars on the top which are elongated or not. Prongs are generally one, two, three, four, or six uh, round prongs on the, around the, the stone. And a bezel is a complete metal edge that goes all the way around. But on this particular case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to make it with the four prong, which generally are about at, if you look at a clock, it would be maybe 1030, 130, uh, going at the, on a clock if you look at them and uh, so we make these little prongs to hold the stone in. Um, when we enlarge this later at 300 percent then you can start to see more detail and I rubbed the two ends off and what you end up with is an oval with these four prongs that go around. Uh, I think that uh, it's uh, clean enough uh, to see and now I'll just put the facets so that I do one quarter of the facet. And the way to get it facet even is only do the quarter. Then you rub it off. Again, the same way you did the oval. All your lines will be reflected exactly, mirrored of the ones that you did first. Do the last one going over. And now what you have in the end is, an, is your complete picture of your stone. Which one more stroke and that will give you the oval stone. Later what we'll do is we'll project the line sideways and we'll do the side view of the stone. Now normally an 8-6, if you do it mathematically, it's an, right over here, 8 by 6. 
You add the two numbers together, it comes to 14. Divide by 2 is 7. Times 0 0.06 will give you, that's 4.2. So 4.2 is the depth of that stone. So you know how thick it is. That's the formula for doing the depth of any stone, most stones. There are also the unusual cuts where a stone is so big that they have to cut them shallower so they'll fit into a ring or an object so it doesn't topple. You'll find when you look at stones, some are very, very deep, and it makes it very hard to design around. The um, Now, what we're going to go to here is we're going to do the average diameter. The average diameter of a ring in the west uh, is se uh, 23. So we're going to mark 23 on the ruler. If I cut this 23, 23, we'll go mark just to here. I'm just slightly off. Could be out here. I'll take my eraser. Erase this line here. So I don't get confused. Take that off. No. With this line here, we're going to just make a very, very simple shank. And I want to do kind of a, a straight shank to start with. It's just coming straight in. And again, I'm doing the quarter. You fold it over, and you end up with the other side. And at the end of the shank, we're going to determine our shanks. Some shanks are, if you look on end, they're either square, like this. They can be kind of with a, almost a rooftop. They call it, it's got a, a, a seam down the center of it. And then they have the ones that are around like this. So you have three different type of shanks. Other th shanks would taper. This already has somewhat of a taper to it. These two do not. But the square is less comfortable. More European, German. The softer shanks are more French, Spanish, American, Japanese. Uh, this particular shank in the middle is more American, this type of thing, with a V-top. Uh, but I'm doing the square. I'm putting, leaving it as a square shank just to get the shape of a basic ring, to get the feeling of the ring. And there now we have, we have the overall look of the basic ring. Now, I've always done this, and many people I've seen do it in different companies, they make them straight, but I'd like to indicate where the front of the finger is, so where the nail is. So I, I always make it thinner at the top than at the bottom. And I go like this, and I bring the little line back here, and then to get it symmetrical, I r rub it off on the other side. And then I have the total finger going through the ring, like this. Now the finger is going through the ring, and the ring is sitting on the finger.